I love to read poetry and I love to write poetry. Being a principal afforded me the opportunity to share that love with the staff, students, and even the families beginning the very first year I was principal. I wasn't sure if it was the appropriate thing to do or how it would be received, but I had the same feeling about the morning message board. I decided it was worth a try. After all, as my custodian liked to remind me, this is my school and I needed to make, I needed to begin to feel at home in it. And this would be one way to achieve that purpose. The first year, I revealed my interest in poetry to my staff, students, and families by strategically posting poems in various locations throughout the school. I said nothing, just waited for someone to notice. I placed a poem about a water fountain, for example, right near the water fountain. I placed a poem about a loose tooth right outside the nurse's office. One at a time, poems started showing up outside the art room, the library, and the gym. There were poems about clocks and staplers, scissors, umbrellas, and even goldfish. There were poems on the mirrors in the restrooms, on the refrigerator, in the staff room, and on the piano in the cafeteria. I posted poems that captured the change of seasons on the windows overlooking the courtyard. And of course, they were noticed. It didn't take long for my staff to realize that I might be the one responsible for this deed. I even placed poems on the school website where I hoped they would have meaning for parents. It seemed only natural during the month of April, which happens to be National Poetry Month, that we would have our own Keep a Poem in Your Pocket Day. Using one of the hallway bulletin boards as my vehicle for advertising the event, I set up a very basic display using materials from the Poetry Organization's website. The idea was simple, I explained to the staff and students. Everyone would select a poem they loved, and on the last Thursday of April, they would tuck it into their pocket. During the day, students and staff would, could stop anyone in the school and ask them, do you have a poem in your pocket? And if the answer were yes, they would read it aloud. Throughout the day, it was heartwarming to see the number of students and adults who stopped one another in the hallway to share their favorite poems. There were smiles and giggles galore as everyone shared their favorites. And at the end of the day, anyone who wanted to contribute their poem to the hallway bulletin board display was invited to send their poem to the office. The bulletin board then featured a beautiful ragtag collection of poems. All the creases and folds served as proof of how many times the poem had been shared. And I think I should stop right there. <laughs> Our pet bunny was no lap sitter. When I first saw him, he looked like a small brown teddy bear with lop ears that hung down to his knees. While cradling him on my chest, I could feel his heart beating on top of mine. I was spellbound. When I brought him home, our children, Marat and Tarek, were delighted with the sudden windfall. The bunny was always being chased for a pat to his silky back. He would stop as if thinking about something, slyly turn his head, and just when you get your hand close enough, he'd take one solid leap out of bounds. We took great delight in the drama of the bunny's adoption story as it unfolded it before an unsuspecting father who returned home a few nights later. Mm -hmm. I never gave a thought about what desert life in Egypt would mean for a small creature with a fur coat years later. Daddy, said Marette, we have a problem. A friend of ours had no place to live and we offered to let him stay here. Yeah, said Tarek trying to unscrew the smile from his mouth, just for a little while. Wafi, their father, was no stranger to the downtrodden. Growing up in Egypt, giving to the poor, was very important. And he had no qualms about welcoming a child less fortunate into our home, and was curiously looking around the kitchen to see where this newcomer was. I still remember his face when he saw our furry fellow trying to hip a hop across the slippery linoleum floor. His expression was a mixture of shock, surprise, and what the hell is that? Cinnamon, as he was named, proved to be quite clever and a quick learner. He used a litter box like a cat. He had free roam of the house, and he followed me out and back each morning when I went to fetch the newspaper. He loved the terrace front yard and would follow along when I went out to weed between the shrubs. While I worked on my hands and knees, he would burrow the soft, rich soil out from the back of his legs into a neat mound. He would advance and repeat his excavation as I moved along the row. 
it was plain to see the rapture that overtook him from the smell of the earth. Cinnamon was known for his sudden donkey kicks that sprayed urine all over the furniture and your pants from the knees down. Eventually, we learned that neutering a rabbit would put an end to this unpleasant habit and had the added benefit of removing the back alley odor that had begun, begun to permeate our home. Before we had a chance to do so, however, we went to visit the grandparents and for a weekend we were forced to leave the bunny behind. Upon our return, the children were anticipating the happy release of Cinnamon from his cage. They came with treats of lettuce and carrot tops. The bunny stared at us in wild-eyed horror, backing into the corner of the cage as though we were coming with a meat cleaver. When the cage door opened, he shot out with lightning speed and was not seen for some time. It took much coaxing and words of endearment to the small space underneath the couch or to the two glaring red eyes from under the bed before he resumed his wandering. He was ever so soft to the touch, and his stillness was calming and dignified. He was a great draw for playdates, often appearing as a circus performer, but was most famous for his disappearing act. At his best, Cinnamon was happy to be showered with love and he would plant a kiss with his cold nose on the back of your ankle in gratitude. I felt his animal magnetism whenever the giant bag of alfalfa hay was near empty, and I would lean down to the bottom to gather the last dried blades of sweet-smelling hay. Inhaling the dust, I was gone. Gone to the forest in a paper bag. <laughs> Thank you. Jesus had kids, never mind what he did, would have been no time for it. He'd ignore the poor and forget the sick. Instead of the dead, he'd be raising kids. Jesus had kids, have to quit the preaching bit. His wife would have a fit. Get down here, help me with these kids. You are not getting out of this. No time for loaves and fishes. Dry the clothes, wash the dishes. Can't live on dreams and wishes. Start selling sermon tickets. Kids are getting big. You're a dad and you've got kids. If Buddha had kids, goodbye. The kid. If Buddha had kids, so long begging it. Goodbye, inner bliss. You need money, hand over fist. Or you can't buy what's on the grocery list. No time for meditation. Standing at the diaper station Little Buddha's got constipation He's giving you sensory information So deal with it <laughs> You're a dad You got kids Best non-paying job around If the Pope had kids <laughs> Pile in for a crowded trip So that we can get to the therapy You can't afford to miss Cause your daughter is on YouTube saying this It's time for liberation Women, priests, and every nation Virgin Mary's my inspiration Cause she gave birth on her vacation Gave us a gift Someone who became God by staying a kid. But he didn't live the life that daddy did. So why do we follow these bachelors around and think they're the only ones that walk on hallowed ground? 
If you can find peace of mind while you are keeping kids in line, give me your address quick. Cause I want to see where God really lives. Because God is in every little kid. The Dalai Lama had kids. It's a world of drool and spit. Temper tantrums, hissy fits. Toddlers yanking on your wrist while you're saving up for colleges. And the boyfriend is trying to steal a kiss from your daughter's red ruby lips. Wait, did I reincarnate for this? Yes, you did. You and all your kids. No time to get enlightened. High prices keep you frightened. Dental bills hot as lightning with orthodontics teeth whitening. And it's even more than this. Cause your dad and you've got to throw out the Roman sandals, blow out the scented candles. Grab a shovel by the handle, scoop that money up like a vandal, cause you'll need all of it. Cause you're a dad and you've got kids. And you're doing more than these guys every day. So you should be proud of it. Thank you. Thank you very much. I am writing or not, getting it down, or thinking about how I am not getting it down. Finding rhythms of words in my head and thinking about the big picture of it all. So I'm in my car, stuck in traffic, on the artery. I am a blood cell encased in a cell membrane of the outer surface of my car looking at all the other blood cells. We are all caught, stuck in the artery needing a bypass. <laughs> I see Venus in evening sky blurry, waving to me in delight, and I wave back. And then Venus, she disappears out of sight. Then a beacon of light greets me early in the morn. Brilliantly, Venus once again is reborn. And I am not writing this down. I am blood cell in the artery. I am Venus worshiper at dawn. I am a writer or not, I just cannot stop. Wren on the roof is calling to his likeness, his feathered kindred on the next roof and the next, and also to the rain impending, and also for the sun as it tries valiantly but fails to make some small appearance through these heavy water-laden clouds. The strong winds are pierced through with bird notes and all manner of asking and telling songs. The air is sharp with lilac and lily of the valley, of passing crabapple blossom and damp earth mown grass. Oh, how he sings. Oh, how I have joined him, thankful in his praises. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm sitting on the settee, but there's nothing on TV. And my iPhone won't connect, so there's no one I can call. I pick up my guitar and play a simple chord, then simply sit there staring at the wall. It's hard to write a song about first world problems end up sounding whiny, self-entitled Like a jerk I might be crouching in the dark As missiles miss their mark But the toughest test I'm facing Is the TiVo didn't work I open the frigid air And wonder if there's something there To ease that peckish interval Between lunch and dinner time Although it's full of dishes Nothing satisfies my itches so I sit 
at the piano, but no verses come to mind. It's hard to write a song about first world problems. They always sound so petty, trying to work the referee. I might have traded my last cent for a bowl of rice and lentil, but instead I have to choose between the Gouda and the Brie. La da da da, la da da da, la da 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 in the morning rain, heading out to catch a train to take me to the city, working for a corporation. The job is kind of boring. I'd rather still be snoring. I strum a little mandolin, but get no inspiration. It's hard to write a song about first world problems put down on paper. They're trivial and trite. I might be sweltering every day, picking crops for meager pay. Instead, I'm here complaining about my sorry plight and wishing I'd partied less last night. La da 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 la da 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 da. La da Thank you. She gave up husband, children, friends, and returned to the cabin on the mountain. Wrapped in a blanket, she chewed her nails, stared crazily at the walls, and wrote. In a week, she began to feed birds piled acorns for the squirrels. She cleared the yard, placed rocks in a neat border. One day she followed a trail into the trees, across the face of rock, waded through juniper and blueberries, and found the forest ranger. She moved in, made love, hung curtains, while the squirrels chewed her manuscript. Her cabin and the trail were blotted out by snow. On windless winter nights, while her ranger sleeps fat as a bear, she falls on the smooth breast of snow to make a flock of angels. In white summer, she stoops to scratch words in the stony earth. Thank you. Dreamers. If you have a dream, rise to your true self, who you really are. Your life can be filled with unlimited possibilities. Reach for the stars. The power is all inside of you to dream and to act upon those dreams. To love and be loved to find that peace within, and to be all of who you really are. Stand fully in yourself, in your I am, and look up high in all you do. Yes, if you have a dream, hold on to that dreamer. Fill yourself up with music and light reach out to your gifts that give you so much meaning trust in those dreams both day and night breathe in who you are this dream is not far and trust in love to guide you Embrace what you feel you know to be real and look up high in all you do. Protect your precious dream, then allow it to be seen. Don't let any darkness surround you. Reach out with both wings, let your heart sing and look up high in all you do. 
Yes, if you have a dream, hold on, please hold on to that dreamer. Fill yourself up with music and light. Reach out to your gifts that give you so much meaning. Trust in your dreams both day and night. And look up high in all you do. Mosaico de sonhos. Comecei procurando a liberdade dentro do escritório. As janelas fechadas, as portas fechadas, persianas fechadas, pessoas fechadas em si mesmas. Fechei os olhos e abri a alma por um segundo. Por que tantos recortes neste mural de fundo indefinido? A alma é um álbum de lembranças, um diário de recortes que em qualquer fase da vida nos enche de sentimentos e nos preenche de emoções. Entre os recortes, falhas na colagem. Abre-se então corredores negros, na forma de triângulos, retângulos, minúsculos quadrados. São as portas que nos levam ao que ficou mais profundamente guardado e registrado em nós. Now in English. Mosaic of Dreams. I started looking for freedom within the office. Windows closed, doors closed, blinds closed, people closed in themselves. I closed my eyes and looked into my soul for a second. Why so many photos, pictures in this mural of undefined background? The soul is an album of memories, a diary of clippings, that at, its, at any stage of life fill us with feelings and fill us with emotions. Among the clippings, failures in the college, and then black corridors start to open themselves in the form of triangles, rectangles, tiny squares. They are doors that led us to what became more deeply stored and registered in us. Thank you so much. Muito obrigada em português. <laughs> oh, western wind, my dear old friend, I remember you. Have you come to call me out like you used to do? I'd follow you through sunlit forests high upon the hill, washed clean by the solitude that I remember still. You'd come bidding me to follow, and I had the will to join you there. Western wind, have you come for me? Well, I am not alone. And though it's true that I would run with you when I was on my own, I'm lying with my true love in the fresh new morning air. Happy as I am, I would not choose to join you there And though it cheers my heart to see you You must have a care to let me be All around the cackling blackbirds have begun Climbing on your back, wheeling circles round the sun Casting shadows down on us As we look up in wonder at the sky Oh, western wind Have you come for me? 
western wind Tell me, have you come far to be with me? Across the sky, from the western shores of the great North Sea Halfway round the world now have you come to find me here To whisper your sweet mysteries into a grown man's ear And did you think that you would find me The child that I was all those years ago All around the cackling blackbirds have begun Climbing on your back, wheeling circles round the sun Casting shadows down on us as we look up in wonder at the sky The western wind blows across the fields I know not how long For life is brief and passes on as quickly as a song But I am lying here and life is coursing through my veins And my love lies beside me She lives and breathes the same as that is all that I require And so I shall remain until we're through Thank you.